In my previous video, Terrible Game Masters, Monty Hall, I besmirched the style that is most bunk, booty, and bunktaculous. A style that you certainly do not wish to play. And remember, magic items may never be a period. They must be the beginning of a sentence. And if there's not more to come, if there's not a story to be told with a prop, what value does the prop have? The answer, nothing. In fact, it may even have a negative quantity of value. And that, my friend, is quite truthfully a jack to you. Now, that being a jack to you is all fine and good. And you're looking to say, my main man, why do you hate magic items so much? Well, I don't. I don't hate magic items at all. I like them and I think they're very, very interesting. But I think they're great when they have their place. They are sprinkles on top of the cupcake. Then they cannot be everything. They cannot be a big part. They have to be a small thing. And after all, you don't need them. There are books that will tell you, oh, you don't want to give players too little magic items. And I say, take those books and to the ground with them. And let that ground itself be an inferno of flame and cast them to the faces of Morgul so that they may be disintegrated as that will be the only way you'll find value in those words is to use them to warm yourself. Now, why, is those, why do those words have no relevance? In any game, you do not need magic items at all, ever. Even if you have others around you that have them, even if you have seen them in the game world, your character does in fact not need them. They will not help in of themselves to, to, to necessarily tell a story. They can be additions or subtractions, you understand, and you should never look at them. It's something you have to get. I have to find out how to get that plus one shield on the, the Cavalier. No, you don't. He'll be fine without it. Work it in when it makes sense. Do things when they make sense. Worry more about making your magic items good than making them abundant. Worry more about what story you can tell with it, what story it told coming in, as opposed to uh, it just simply being there so you get that extra plus one bonus to armor class. So that you get that extra bump to strength. So that you get that extra bump, you know, to whatever, uh, to hit or damage or whatever unimportant category that you have deemed in your mind. So, ah, it's not, not important, man. Don't worry about it. Relax. Relax. And if you're sitting there tripping on magic items at a game, boy, your game must suck. Don't, don't make the game suck. And don't burn out your game master. Oh, I need a plus five grappling hook. Oh. I don't have a plus five grappling hook. I, I can't believe it. It doesn't matter. You don't need a plus five grappling hook. You understand? Nor do you need a plus five Holy Avenger. You don't need any of these things. They're only props to tell the story. Now, you go, oh, well, I don't, I don't like the magic items. That's all. Well, here's the deal. I like them when they're used. When they're used right. When they help tell that story. An interesting way that you can, you can do this. When you're devising magic items, and I often like to devise magic items specifically around the character. A story involving a mentor or a god or an old legend or, you know, an ancestor generations ago. It's so many, many, many different stories, each one in themselves, a volume, as perhaps even multiple videos to cover any of these different aspects. I like to put that personal stamp on magic items so they mean something. It's like, well, yeah, dude, that, that is a plus three short sword and that, that is a plus ten short sword there. But but did I tell you the story here of St. Jean? No, I didn't. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll sit down and tell that story. You understand? And that's where the cool factor is. That's where it, it pops and makes sense. Once that character goes, you know, tells you like, oh, you know, win games out of character or whatever. But man, that's my, that's my, you know, that, that's, that's it. I don't want, I don't want that plus five long sword. There's plus three short sword for that story. That's mine. You can see right there, you've elevated your game by the inclusion of a prop. It's not just a magic item. You do it with anything. You can do that with anything. It's like an ordinary belt. Yes, that's right. I mean, I've taken an ordinary belt and made that a prop and elevated the game up. You understand? So the players, they they, they, they get things for reasons. They are, they are gifted items. We get a plot line behind it. All right? Perhaps somebody doesn't, doesn't have magic item money. You know, not that you should sell magic items. Don't ever do that. It's horrible. Uh, but they... they Gift a player with a belt. And there's a whole story there. I'm not going to go in and spend 15 minutes telling a story like that. But it's important. Now it's important. The character's thinking about, oh, I got this this red leather belt. And it's got these studs. It's got this, like, bull's head uh, brass belt buckle on it. You know, I might pull it off and choke a man. I might strap a man. I might run in a fist and just, just lacerate a man. 
and you got to sell it like, oh, you know, pff, bust them man. But why wouldn't you? So, you know, you're bringing details in. You're making any little thing mean something. You know, like I said, the belt or boots or pants, all up and down the list. I've, I've had players that would not let go of the weapon they started with. It was nothing. They'd be like, oh, no, that's my rapier. That's my father. And then we got this backstory. And I'm like, oh, all right. Okay. You know, I mean, magic items is you could have get, but that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. It makes sense. You have a story. That's good. That's what you want to tell. Um, when you have a player and you want to sort of sucker punch him, right? You got this. Say you got this badass fighter, right? And he's got all his standard. Let, let, let's break it down. Let's say you just have a moderate player here, and he has a very stereotypical character. Human fighter, long sword, shield, play mail, and you fall asleep. We'll take him and go, well, I could give him a plus. Magical plate mail, or maybe magical scale mail, or magical shield, or a long sword that's magical. Yeah, I could do all that. But what if instead... We just leave him with normal items in that regard. Just, you know, and you you don't really even ever write in that he's ever going to get anything. And you're not just having, like, magic swords drop left and right like it's World of Warcraft. Uh, and sadly, the sort of video games, they prepare people horrendously to tell a game that I would want to play in. And that's to say a game that is of quality. And that's what each and every one of you that are out there watching these videos, I really believe that's what you want, to tell the game that is the best in your gaming circle. To have people go, oh, that's the GM there. Or, or, or as a player, go, oh, that's the role player. That's our role player. That's our best player. That's the MVP of RPG. So that, that, that's, from me, my perspective, on what we're talking about here, to examine issues on the examination table. Imagine this. Right? You have that same fighter, very bland, very blasé. Very, ugh. And all of a sudden, we, you build up an angle, right, where he acquires this, magic item. Perhaps it, it, it's of his god or it's of his ancient ancestor and you, you'll build it from the very beginning. And this is 29 game sessions into the campaign and he finally comes to find the, the body of his of his uh, great 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 grandfather. And his great grandfather was like a wizard of renown. And he's able to get the body back. And the body was taken to another country and it was, it was grave robbed. But he finally gets the body. And and he, you know, he, he ends up getting this this cloak off the body or whatever. You'll be working it in however. I, I didn't really kind of plan all that. Maybe that seems a bit more where he's just like, ha, 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 you my grandfather. Right into the fire with that body. Uh, but, you know, we examine it from that aspect to say, okay, look. He's going to have this item, however it comes about. You know, whether it's some stolen from his family or whatever. But it comes into him. And he might not even know exactly what the item does. Just maybe it's name. It's like yes, uh, the cloak of, uh, of of Van Halen, and the cloak of Van Halen is is his family's joint, right? And uh, but he he doesn't really know what he does. So when he gets there, he's a fighter, but now he's gonna get these big bonuses of the music or whatever the fuck it is. You know, what cloak of Van Halen does, but it it gives you something to work with because it, it's made his character completely different. He's like, well, I was like, I was going to plus five broadsword, you know. But no, you didn't get a plus five broadsword. Dude. You got this cloak, and the cloak itself might may have some very interesting and different sorts of abilities that that take his character just spiral off in, in a very interesting and different direction. And it, it takes that mediocre, bland role player that quite honestly needed a pull. And a lot of role players out there need a pull. So you've given him a plot device to work with. Instead of giving him what he wanted, right, he, he wanted this damage, but what you've given him, if he, if he has any mind for it, it's a hobby at all, you've given him plot. You've given him uh, something different. You've given him uh, an ability to to really add to his character, to make it his own stamp on it. And that itself can be very, very interesting. When you create that magic item that has a very different feel to that character and maybe brings a character completely out of, particularly if it's, if it's even a mildly power gamery game where people don't predicate... Uh, any anything for me, anything that's function over form is power gaming. That's the equation for power gaming. And power gaming itself, as a, I mean, there's power gaming one, power gaming ten. When you start making functioning choices that contradict your form, then you're power gaming. That is the definition I use for power gaming. Even if you're not doing it well, uh, but for me, that 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 sort of character, right? 
you, you've pulled him out, and now you've given him different opportunity and options to add to his character. Remember, you have not violated any of his choices. You did not say, oh, you have to take this level, you have to do that, you have to do X, Y, or Z. You've just simply given him more. It's like, here you go, and here's, here's some extra stuff you can do. Here's some extra bonuses you have. Here's some extra ability. Here's some extra X, Y, or Z that puts that character in a position where they can be of particular interest. Now, you know, they, and, and, and design it, if he's bland and gray, put, put color on it, you know, do, do something interesting that makes his character more. Remember, uh, as a game master, you really need to get with your players and make sure that they're producing characters that are going to be entertaining. They're going to be interesting. And, this is a great tactic, particularly used when you have that player that goes, oh, I'm getting bored with what I'm doing, I don't know. And he's bored, you know, for his own fault. But how do you solve it? Because you're going to get jacked. He's just going to make a new character, and all your plot lines just fell apart. Well, give him the opportunity to have that completely new twist and change in his character right off the bat. So there you go. There's your main man's thoughts for you. Remember, though, that there's no magic item more powerful than the Gauntlet of Ander Strength because that gives you a plus 20 bonus to awesome.